Hi, bienvenidos a Coffee Break Spanish. Welcome to Coffee Break Spanish. Now, in this lesson, Maria Jose and Andrew are talking about the Canary Islands and they're using lots of past tenses. So, there will be examples of the perfect tense, the preterite tense, and the imperfect tense in there too. We hope that you find this lesson a useful review of the past tenses in Spanish. Okay, so as usual, we're going to begin by listening to the conversation between Maria Jose and Andrew. And this time, Andrew is asking Maria Jose about the island of Tenerife, which is one of the Canary Islands off the coast of Africa. It belongs to Spain, and they speak Spanish. However, you will find out that they do actually use some different words in Canarias, and that's what Maria Jose is going to be talking about in this conversation. Now, Cara, I'd like you to see if you can spot the things that Maria Jose used to do in Tenerife when she was there on holiday. Before we even listen to this conversation, if we're talking about what she used to do, which tense will she be using? We'll be using the imperfect. That's right. So if Maria Jose is talking in the imperfect, then we're going to be listening for what types of endings with the imperfect tense. We'll be looking out for the ya endings and the aba endings. Absolutely. Have a listen to the conversation and see how much you understand. María José, ¿ya has visitado Tenerife? Mi amigo de Inglaterra va a los cristianos el fin de semana que viene. Sí, muchas veces. Cuando era joven siempre íbamos a Tenerife. Mi tía tenía una casa en los cristianos y solíamos pasar el mes de agosto con ella. ¿Y qué hacíais? Era genial. Siempre había mucha gente y teníamos muchos amigos de los cristianos. Solíamos ir a la playa, cenábamos en restaurantes y salíamos cada noche. Hay un volcán allí, ¿verdad? Sí, es la atracción turística más famosa de la isla de Tenerife. Se llama el Teide. ¿Sabes que en las Canarias utilizan un español un poco distinto? ¿Ah, sí? Sí. Por ejemplo, en vez de decir autobús, dicen guagua. Y casi nunca utilizan el vosotros. Siempre dicen ustedes. Por ejemplo, no se dice vosotros coméis pan, se dice ustedes comen pan. Y también tienen otra palabra para comer que es chascar. Uf, es difícil. Sí, y en Canarias no se dice difícil, sino difícil. Pero el español que estoy aprendiendo yo se entiende por todas partes del mundo, ¿verdad? Hombre, claro que sí. Es como el inglés. El inglés que aprendí yo en Londres es distinto al tuyo. Y los americanos hablan distintamente también. Pero si tú estuvieras hablando con un americano, él te entendería, ¿no? Y si yo hablo mi español en Madrid, o Canarias, o Buenos Aires, o Cuzco, me entienden perfectamente. Y eso es lo importante. Claro. So, Cara, I asked you if you could try to work out what Maria Jose used to do when she went on holiday to Tenerife. Can you tell me if you recognized anything in there? Yes, absolutely. She said when she used to go to Los Cristianos, she would usually go to the beach, she would eat in restaurants, and she would go out every night. That's it. Íbamos a la playa. Cenábamos en restaurantes y salíamos cada noche. So three different verbs, each of which are in the imperfect tense. How would you say I went to the beach? Iba a la playa. Iba a la playa, exactly. And I dined in a restaurant? Cenaba en restaurantes. Yeah, cenaba en restaurantes, cenaba en un restaurante. And... I went out each night. Salía cada noche. Okay, so your w verbs which are regular and are AR verbs, for example, cenar or cenar, 
take the ava endings, tenava, tenabas, tenaba, tenabamos, tenabais, tenaban. And the verbs which are ir or er endings, like salir, they take the ia endings. So salir becomes salia, 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 salíamos, salíais, salían. Now, there are some verbs which are irregular in the imperfect tense. Cara, can you remember what they were? One We've had one already in this sentence. It's ear. Ear, that's right. So we've got ear, which becomes... Iba, ibas, iba, ibamos, ibais, iban. Muy bien. So that's ear. Can you remember any other verbs which are irregular in the imperfect tense? Ser. Muy bien. Which would become... Era, eras, era, eramos, erais, eran. Muy bien. Any other ones that you can remember that are irregular in the imperfect tense? What about the verb to see? Ver. Ver, that's right. So how would you say, I used to see or I was seeing? Bia. Almost right, it's beia. Beia. Okay, so it's very, very slightly irregular. It keeps the e of the V-E-R infinitive. And then it adds the ia endings on after that. So, beia, beias, beia, beiamos, beiais, beian. And any other verbs in the imperfect tense which are irregular? Nope, there are only three. That's correct. Ber, ser, and ir. However, one thing to mention, sometimes with verbs in Spanish and indeed in other languages, you have derivatives of a particular verb. So take, for example, the verb ver, which means to see. The verb prever, which means to foresee, is also conjugated like ver. So if you say, I f- was foreseeing, if that happened to be what you were trying to translate, you would say preveía. Preveía. So using the same form as beía, but just sticking pre in front of it. Preveía. Preveía. Preveíamos. Preveíamos. Preveíamos, and so on. Now, in this text, there are quite a number of interesting language points that we can pick up on. We've already looked at the imperfect tense, and there were quite a number of these when Maria José was talking about what she used to do when she was younger, and when she went to visit her aunt's house in Tenerife, in Los Cristianos. But there were also some other points that we're going to pick up on now. And one of these was Maria José's use of the verb soler. And this is a very interesting verb indeed. It's spelled S-O-L-E-R, soler. Soler. That's right. We'll talk about first what it means and then we'll look at how it's conjugated. Soler is quite a tricky verb to translate because it doesn't just, it doesn't have an, an equivalent in English. If I say, suelo ir al cine el viernes, that means I normally or I tend to go to the cinema on Fridays. So, if anything, soler means to tend to do something. So, suelo ir al cine el viernes. Suelo ir al cine el viernes. That's it. So, I tend to do something. Suelo hacer algo. Okay, suelo hacer algo. Suelo hacer algo. Now, this verb works in lots of different tenses. So, uh, Maria José said... Solíamos ir a la playa. So we tended to go to the beach. Solíamos ir a la playa. Solíamos ir a la playa. Exactly. So we tended to go, or we we normally went to the beach. So it's this idea of normally doing something, and it's a really nice verb to use in Spanish. It demonstrates that you're that bit more developed in, in your Spanish vocabulary and your range of expression. Let's think now about how to actually conjugate this verb, because as you've probably guessed from the present tense, it's what kind of verb, Cara? It's a radical changing verb. It is indeed. So the O of the infinitive, soler, becomes... A U-E. In the present tense, exactly. So, I tend to do something is... Suelo. Suelo, hacer algo. You tend to do something? Sueles. Sueles, hacer algo. He, she or it... Tends to go to the swimming pool. Suele ir a la piscina. 
Suele ir a la piscina. Muy bien. What about we tend to eat gazpacho? Solemos comer gazpacho. Exacto. And well done. You, you remember that it's no longer suelo, suele, suele. It goes back to so in the nosotros and vosotros form. And do you remember what gazpacho is? No. It's a cold tomato-based soup. Very nice. Very garlicky as well. El gazpacho. Solemos comer gazpacho. Solemos comer gazpacho. And what about you all tend to read a book? Soleis leer un libro. Soleis leer un libro. Muy bien. And what about they tend to watch the television? Suelen ver la televisión. Televisión. Tele Suelen ver la televisión. La televisión. Suelen ver la televisión. So they tend to. So suelo, sueles, suele, solemos, soleis, suelen. Suelo, sueles, suele, solemos, soleis, suelen. Okay. In the text, María José used the... Well, which tense did she use? She said soliamos. She used imperfect. Of course she did. So let's conjugate this in the imperfect. And because, of course, it's regular in the imperfect, it should be very easy. Muy fácil. So, in the imperfect tense, what would the I form be, the yo form? Solía. Solía. Uh -huh. And the tu form? Solías. So, you tended to go to the swimming pool? Solías ir a la piscina. Uh -huh. uh, he, she or it tended to go by car. Solía ir en coche. Solía ir en coche or carro, depending on where you are. Solía ir en coche. We tended to go to the beach, like María José. Solíamos ir a la playa. Muy bien, solíamos ir a la playa. And then you all, the informal plural version, used in Spain, of course, vosotros, you all tended to listen to music. Solíais escuchar la música. Sí, es escuchar música. If you say escuchar la música, then you would have to go on and see which music it was. So, solíais escuchar la música que me gustaba. Okay. You, you tended to listen to the music that I liked. So, if you just want to say you listen to music, solíamos escuchar música, escuchar música, música just on its own. Okay. And they tended to write a letter. Solían escribir una carta. Muy bien. Solían escribir una carta. Now, to be honest with soler, it tends just to be used in the present and the imperfect. Because the, the chances of you saying something like, I will tend to do such and such, you know, in a future life, it's, it's not the most obvious of, uh, of situations. So if you know it in the present and in the imperfect, you can put it together with an infinitive. And it's a much more expressive way of saying that you tended to do something rather than just saying you used to do something, or indeed what you normally do on a particular day or at a particular time. Okay, before we move on, I'm just going to mention a couple of things that Maria José said in relation to the Spanish used in the Canary Islands. First of all, she mentioned some particular words that are used. For example, autobús is not used, it's the guagua. And people say that it's because that's what the sound of the bus makes as it chugs along the road. And it's actually used in Cuba as well. Wagua is used in parts of Cuba to talk about the bus. She also mentioned the word chascar. And chascar means normally, in, in standard Spanish, to eat something very quickly or to gobble it up. It also means to, to click when you're talking about your tongue, chascar. Now, it's probably better that you don't use this. You you can recognise it if you're in the Canaries. But if you say, quiero chascar la tortilla, it doesn't really sound as nice as quiero comer la tortilla or something like that. So just be careful with chascar. Now, Maria José also mentioned some slight differences in usage, for example, with the, the usage of vosotros, which doesn't really get used at all in the Canaries. 
And instead, people say, ustedes. So, ustedes comen pan, as opposed to, vosotros coméis pan. So, in that sense, it's very like most places in Latin America. And another thing that links it to most places in Latin America is the use of the s sound rather than the th sound. For example, with gracias in most of mainland Spain and gracias in Canarias. So, for example, exactly the same as in most parts of Latin America, you would say gracias and not gracias. In the, the text, uh, Maria José said, en Canarias no se dice difícil, sino difícil. Okay, Mark, that sounds good, and I get that. But what does sino mean? You said, no se dice difícil, sino difícil. Yeah, sino is, is the words yes and no together. Si, no. So if not that, then that. It's kind of like saying rather or but rather. So that could be translated in the Canary Islands. One doesn't say difícil, but rather difícil. So it's, it's a little word that's used in that kind of situation. You don't do that, but you do do that. So that one little word, sino, can mean but rather or a more complicated explanation depending on the actual context. Okay. When Maria José is explaining the fact that speaking a particular type of language, whether it's Spanish or English, doesn't necessarily mean that other people in other parts of the world don't understand you, she uses quite a complicated sentence in Spanish. Have a listen to the whole sentence and then we're going to talk about it. Pero si tú estuvieras hablando con un americano, él te entendería. Okay, so there's two verbs in there. The first is estuvieras hablando and the second is entendería. Let's go to the entendería first. Cara, can you tell me which tense entendería is? It's the conditional tense. Exactly. The ia ending after the infinitive in this case, or the future stem, entendería, it's the infinitive. So, él te entendería means... He will understand you. He will understand you. He would you. understand you. He would, you. good, yeah. He would understand you, would being the conditional, and will being the... Future. Yeah. So... He would understand you. Let's go back to the first part of the sentence now. Si tú estuvieras hablando con un americano. So it's got something to do with hablar con un americano, which would mean just the infinitive of hablar. To talk with an American. Yeah, so it's something about to talk with an American. But we're using estuvieras hablando. And that's the imperfect subjunctive of estar plus the gerund. You remember when we were learning a couple of weeks back, I am doing something at the moment. For example, I am eating. How would you say, I am eating? Estoy comiendo. Muy bien, estoy comiendo. How would you say then, I am talking? Estoy hablando. Estoy hablando. Let's, let's think about this a little, because if you say, estoy hablando for I am eating, how would you say, I was speaking? Estaba hablando. Good. So, I was speaking. Estaba hablando. I am speaking. Estoy hablando. Uh -huh. What about I will be speaking? Estaré hablando. Estaré hablando, yes. Yeah. So, the future tense of estar plus the gerund. And I would be speaking becomes... Estaría hablando. Excellent. Estaría hablando. So, you can use the estar plus the gerund in all these different tenses. Estoy hablando, estaba hablando, estaré hablando, estaría hablando, or indeed any other thing that you might be doing. So, in this situation, we're saying, si tú estuvieras hablando con un americano. And estuvieras is a type of imperfect, is the imperfect subjunctive that goes along with, it's matched up with the conditional. And it's, it's quite complicated. It's just the same as si fuera rico, compraría una casa. If I were rich, I would buy a house. Exactly. And even in English, we use this slightly strange form, this subjunctive form. If I were rich, I would buy a house. If you were speaking with an American, he would understand you. Si estuvieras hablando con un americano, él te entendería. 
Can you try saying that whole sentence, Cara? Pero si tu estuvieras hablando con un americano, él te entendería. Exacto. Now, we have covered a couple of really quite complicated things in this uh, lesson, so we're going to leave it there. There will be more explanations of some of the other aspects when we publish the bonus materials for this lesson. In the meantime, have a listen to the conversation once more, and this time it will be near normal speed, and see how much of these points that we've mentioned you can pick out from the text. María José, ¿ya has visitado Tenerife? Mi amigo de Inglaterra va a los cristianos el fin de semana que viene. Sí, muchas veces. Cuando era joven siempre íbamos a Tenerife. Mi tía tenía una casa en los cristianos y solíamos pasar el mes de agosto con ella. ¿Y qué hacíais? Era genial. Siempre había mucha gente y teníamos muchos amigos de los cristianos. Solíamos ir a la playa, cenábamos en restaurantes y salíamos cada noche. Hay un volcán allí, ¿verdad? Sí, es la atracción turística más famosa de la isla de Tenerife. Se llama el Teide. ¿Sabes que en las Canarias utilizan un español un poco distinto? ¿Ah, sí? Sí, por ejemplo, en vez de decir autobús, dicen guagua. Y casi nunca utilizan el vosotros. Siempre dicen ustedes. Por ejemplo, no se dice vosotros coméis pan, se dice Ustedes comen pan. Y también tienen otra palabra para comer, que es chascar. Uf, es difícil. Sí, y en Canarias no se dice difícil, sino difícil. Pero el español que estoy aprendiendo yo se entiende por todas partes del mundo, ¿verdad? Hombre, claro que sí. Es como el inglés. El inglés que aprendí yo en Londres es distinto al tuyo... Y los americanos hablan distintamente también. Pero si tú estuvieras hablando con un americano, él te entendería, ¿no? Y si yo hablo mi español en Madrid o Canarias o Buenos Aires o Cuzco, me entienden perfectamente. Y eso es lo importante. Claro. And that's where we're going to leave it today for this edition of Coffee Break Spanish. Thanks for joining us, and we hope it's been useful. You can join the Coffee Break Spanish community on Facebook at facebook.com slash coffeebreakspanish and follow at Learn Spanish on Twitter. Muchas gracias y hasta pronto. This is a production of the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at radiolingua.com.